Hello and welcome to the first edition of New Day Calumet City with our mayor, Thaddeus Jones. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Deanne. Thank you for hosting this. I uh, appreciate you for not only joining us in Calumet City, but welcome residents. This is our first show. This is an opportunity for us to communicate with residents, tell you about my vision for Calumet City, and also tell you how we're going to bring Calumet City not only to the 21st century, but bring new businesses to Calumet City, and it all includes you. We want you to be involved not only in Calumet City government, but we want you to be involved in this new vision of how we're going to make our city one of the best communities around. That involves public safety, that involves crime fighting measures, it involves block clubs, but it also involves us coming outside of these four walls out of City Hall to make sure that you know that you're more important to me and our administration. So I want to thank Deanne for hosting this show. We're going to make this show informative. So please make sure you tune in as we put this on our community channel. So we're going to get into some topics today about how we're going to bring Calumet City up to par, but it involves you as well. So thank you, Deanne. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, many of our residents are very familiar with you. They followed you over the last 25 plus years yes. and your service here in Calumet City. Please talk to us about your tenure here in Calumet City as a resident and how you first became engaged in community affairs. Do you want the version with, without hair or with hair? Because <laughs> it's been a long tenure in here in Calumet City. So what mo most residents don't know about me is I was born and raised in Fort Hikes. Um, it was a long struggle. Uh, I was born with a rare blood disease that I had seizures up until I was 14. And there were times when my mother didn't even know if I would survive. Um, but the most tragic thing that happened was when my dad died when I was eight, uh, it forced me to not only struggle, but it also forced me to find out who I was. And I moved to Cayman City in 1991, uh, got involved in politics, been involved in politics since I was 13. Uh, I was a trustee at South Suburban College. Mm -hmm. And when I moved here in 1991, I knew I wanted to get involved in government, but I didn't know at what level. Because I always wanted to be a police officer. And if you can imagine that, I always wanted to be a police officer. And part of me wanted to do some type of government. And in 1996, I ran for a third ward alderman, and I was elected as the first African-American alderman in the 100-year history of Calumet City. Mm -hmm. And I served as alderman till 2017, uh, left to get my law degree at Loyola, and now I'm back as the first black mayor of Calumet City, which has uh, a lot of uh, accountability and a lot of uh, excitement, but I'm here to yes, make sure that we bring Calumet City to the forefront. How much has your professional background prepared you for government service, Mr. Mayor? You know, I don't think anybody's professional background prepares them for the daily grind in, in politics and in, in the struggle. I think you have to learn how to compromise and how to deal with people. My professional background, uh, I served as executive director at Thorn Township. I was the chairman of human relationship, relations at Thorn Township. I was the executive at American Airlines. Uh, I was also executive at UPS, uh, so all that just let me know how to manage uh, the day-to-day -day grind, but there's no way you get prepared for the day-to-day -day struggles that happens in municipal government because it's all about people. Um, and what we do every morning is we pray every morning. And so our goal is to make sure that we have our employees and everyone come together just so we learn each other, but also ask everyone to come in with a good mind. Uh, a good temperament, because we're here to serve people. Uh, but my daily struggle uh, to get here, my management style, is just built on the struggles that I've had in my life and my interaction with people and making sure that we all are comfortable with the vision that we all need for Cayman City, which is a great vision. Absolutely. And now we just have to implement that vision, get dollars. So if we have the governor or the president listening, we need more money for Cayman City. So we need at least a hundred more million dollars uh, to help build this vision out for Cayman City, which we, we are gonna get, but it's gonna be a struggle to get that as well. And speaking of vision, what is your overall vision for Calumet City moving forward, Mr. Mayor? That's a great question. My overall vision is econo sound economic development policies, uh, having a stable budget, transparency, accountability, 
So residents, you have to hold me accountable as well. And part of that is including and, and talking to me and calling me, calling our city hall, coming to our city hall. We're not open now due to the pandemic, but we will open soon. And we want our residents to see what we're doing to change government that's gonna make it better for the people of Cayman City. My vision also includes a, a sound public safety. We've hired uh, new police officers, we're hiring new firefighters, we, we want our police officers to go and talk to you residents. We want our police officers to go and talk to businesses. And we want our police officers to not only have a diversified background, but not be um, so hard with residents, but also connecting with the residents. And that's key, Absolutely. because in the past, our police department hasn't connected with our residents. So we want them to show that they care about our residents and concerned about residents. We're having a new public safety and a public works department. We're gonna hold everyone accountable so we're keeping our streets clean. Cayman City hasn't had a street sweeper in probably four years. And that's sad because our community needs to stay clean and it will stay clean because we directed our public works department to make sure places like River Oaks Mall and River Oaks West, we keep those clean. Uh, we also want to make sure that our residents understand that we're trimming our budget. Last year our budget was $36 million. This year is $49 million. And that's because we've been aggressive. We've been aggressive in reducing overtime. We've been aggressive in making sure that our departments are held accountable. But just trimming the waste uh, that allows us to provide better services to our residents. Uh, so part of my vision is to make sure our residents understand how your budget works, how your government works, and how your tax dollars are being spent uh, so we get the best value for the tax dollars for our residents. Mr. Mayor, can you give us, um, dive a little deeper in terms of your vision and specific to River Oaks Mall? Oh, River Oaks Mall is the crown jewel. I'm glad you brought that up because River Oaks Mall has been and still is like the crown jewel of Cayman City. And my vision is to save River Oaks Mall, but also have River Oaks Mall be the entertainment destination for Cayman City and the region. And that means when we get the casino in Cayman City, that we make that our focus point, but not just plop a casino down in Cayman City, but plop uh, a sports dome there, plop an entertainment destination there, plop a hotel there, uh, mixed with use ho mixed housing, uh, a grocery store at River Oaks Mall, uh, and have residents come there for two days as opposed to one day uh, and make them enjoy Cayman City, but also allow them to see the beauty of what we can envision for River Oaks Mall. And our plan starts with the casino, but it's not all about the casino. Uh, so in years past, we've had administrations just hope that a casino comes to Cayman City and that was just it. And we can't do that anymore because sometimes casinos do not work. Even though they're bringing in 100 million, but is it 100 million of good money? that's gonna be investing in the outer neighborhoods of Cayman City. So my vision for that River Oaks Mall includes all the things I just mentioned, but it also includes a public safety aspect because in that area we have seniors there, we have Sam's Club, uh, we have a, a, a growing uh, base of people that are traveling through Cayman City uh, to go to Indiana. We're all surrounded by expressways, so we want residents, when they come to River Oaks Mall, to see the beauty of what we're gonna to do to rebuild River Oaks Mall. Uh, and I know they're gonna be excited about it, but residents just wanna see construction. They wanna see a start. My vision has to start with some construction as well. Um, so thank you for asking that question because River Oaks Mall is gonna mean a lot to Cayman City in the future. Indeed. And, and as far as the, the diversity that you mentioned, um, how is that going to play in the overall vision? Where does diversity come into play? Well, diversity is a great concept. I mean, you yourself uh, being the first uh, Asian uh, woman of my chief of staff and the city administrator, you know, I would love for you to talk about that as well because that shows that we're diversifying our ranks, but also diversifying our police department, we're going to ask our police officers to do diversity training, which is required by law, uh, making sure that they connect with our residents. Um, we've hired uh, our police and fire commission. We have our first uh, Latina woman of, uh, on our police and fire commission. We have our first African American male, two, first, two African American males on our police and fire commission. 
Uh, one is a detective, one is a doctor. So we know that that adds to the overall vision of Calumet City. But we're also looking at, we put money in the budget for a Hispanic coordinator to reach out to our Hispanic community. We've also put money in the budget um, to have our first chaplain uh, that's gonna come in to our city and pray for our residents and heal our community. So diversity means a lot, but it also means that we have to make sure people are trained, make sure we're bringing in people of good character, but it adds to the value of what Calumet City will be. So I know you have an interesting background and residents need to know you as well because you're entrusted to be my chief of staff, but you're also entrusted as our city administrator. So how do you feel Calumet City uh, is coming along and how do you want us to, to see? So diversity has always been very important to me, um, especially having grown up in Bolingbrook, Illinois. It was uh, back in my days without aging myself. Um, <laughs> it, it was considered this huge melting pot. Um, you know, there, there were African Americans, Mexicans, Hispanics, Asians, Puerto Ricans, um, and it, it actually wasn't until when I was um, at a track, a regional track meet, that for the first time, having stepped out of Bolingbrook, I was exposed um, to, to racial bias. Um, and uh, I won't say what city we were in, but, um, yeah, you know, it, it, was, it was an eye-opener to me at that point. And it was just thinking back to it. We talk about this regularly, but thinking back to it, it's amazing to me um, how long I went growing up over the years in Bolingbrook of, of almost being blind to what was going on out in the rest of the world. Um, so diversity is absolutely very important. Um, here in Calumet City, you know, as you mentioned, we, we have, um, you know, we have Hispanic commissioner on the police and fire board. We are looking um, to make sure that we have translators translators on staff and not just for uh, phone conversations but also to incorporate um, our newsletters, the website, any information that the city sends out to our residents so they are included, equally included um, and in the know. Um, well you know and to that point, Cayman City when I was first elected as the first black alderman, Cayman City was 80 percent white yeah. and probably 10 percent black and maybe 1% Hispanic. Those numbers have reversed, where Cayman City is now almost 80% black, 10% white, and 10% Hispanic. So our community has changed and gone through a cultural shock, but it's good for our area because we know what we have to, what value all of these residents bring to Cayman City. So we're not like the other communities that are surrounding Cayman City. We have a chance to really make a difference in each other's lives. So my vision is also to include things like diversity dinners. So residents get to share a meal with each other and learn about the cultural differences in Cayman City. We still have a small segment of Cayman City that, that are Polish Americans in Cayman City. Uh, so we have to make sure that we understand each other so we understand the value that we each bring to Cayman City and that's gonna be important. Indeed, indeed. You know, growing up for me, I'll say this, um, you know, my, my mother's Asian, uh, full Asian, my father is American, German, Irish, um, and I was exposed to, um, uh, I'll say, uh, racial diversity, or not diversity, but um, it, there, was, there was bias within the family when my mother came over from Korea. Um, my own family members were very cold to her, cold-hearted, um, pretty much excluded her from the family. Um, since then, we've, we've come a long way, so I, I do believe it can happen, should happen, and will happen. Um, you know, and now I, I, have, I have Hispanics, you know, I have Mexican aunties and uncles and cousins, exactly. and I have black cousins, and I have a, you know, and so there's this, there's this good mix of family, and it's amazing what, what can happen when people come together as a whole. It doesn't matter of what race, of what ethnicity, what color, um, none of that matters. But when you come together as a whole and you're able to come together as a whole, you're able to accomplish so much more. I think we should get your mother on and have oh, her no. interview. I think the residents would love and enjoy hearing uh, from your mother and her perspectives, because she, they that's, a show, that's a show within the show, but we, we definitely need to add uh, value so she can talk about her experiences as well, 
uh, with not only Cayman City, but in Bolingbrook. And we, all these communities are changing. I think it's, up, it's the leadership that matters in these communities. So if the leadership is not adjusting to what the changing environment in the community, then we don't know what our residents want. Leadership reflects attitude. And, and leadership right? matters. So we're, Absolutely, we're gonna make sure that we bring Cayman City uh, to the forefront, but we also know that we have to have not only transparency, but we also have to make sure that we are connecting with each other. Absolutely right. Um, as far as you know, connecting and come together, uh, coming together as a city, a lot of, um, as you know, Mr. Mayor, um, as well as myself as City Administrator, Chief of Staff, we are working very hard and diligently on restructuring our departments here. Um, you know, talk, talk a little bit about how you see that restructuring process going, and, and I'll certainly share my thoughts as well. Well, you know, Cayman City has 11 departments, and each department adds value to the residents. I mean, we've got public works, we have inspectional services, uh, we have the water department, we have the police department, the fire department. Um, we are trying to change all of those departments. We have the purchasing department. So all of those departments add value to the residents, starting with uh, something as uh, the Public Works Department. The Public Works Department is responsible for keeping our streets clean. They're responsible for snow removal. They're responsible for tree. Uh, they're responsible for our waste management services. So we appointed our first Hispanic uh, Public Works Commissioner, uh, and we've charged him with making sure we keeps our city clean but also manage, making sure that he manages the employees of the Public Works Department. We've gone through a restructuring of that department where we have deputy commissioners now. Mm -hmm. We have some of the first uh, two African-American deputy commissioners, and we have a mixture of commissioners uh, who've been in Cayman City for 20 years who know the mileage in Cayman City. They know the history of Cayman City. So they're helping the, this nice mesh between the old and the young uh, but that transitions into our water department. So our water department is valuable to Cayman City because those are valuable resources to our residents. So we are restructuring our water department where we make the water department more accountable, not only to the residents, but accountable to themselves. Not just coming to work and having a job, but also coming here uh, to make sure that everyone's water bill is taken care of, making sure that we keep our waters clean. Uh, and then our inspection services department. That is the department that runs our business community. So our first a business that comes wants to come into Cayman City, their first interaction with the business should be with me and it also should be with inspection services. So understanding how inspection services work with um, securing that business, inspecting that business, making sure that all the electrical things are up to code, making sure that they understand what they have to pay for, asking them to have cultural diversity as well in their businesses, not being rude to customers, uh, creating a base in Calumet City that's gonna allow them to stay in Calumet City. Uh, but also to that point, we just created like our business uh, diversity uh, program where we're gonna help support businesses by giving them a $5,000 grant. And that's gonna help retain businesses in Calumet City, help them wanna stay in Calumet City but help them create uh, a value where residents are not just going into a business, uh, not knowing about, about that business, but actually uh, working with that business. And then we have our upstairs with our purchasing department. We restructured our purchase department, working with our unions uh, to make sure that employees that work in Cayman City, they have good character, but they also are part of a union that allows them to stay in Cayman City and be a, a great family in Cayman City, help pay taxes, and understand the value that we have in Cayman City. So we're still restructuring our departments. I know residents are, are definitely uh, excited about the change that we, we're doing in Cayman City. Uh, so I appreciate the notes that residents have, have given me about some of the small changes that we've done, but there are big changes coming. Uh, we're looking at a new city hall I'm sure we're gonna get into that, if not now, but later. And that's gonna make sure that seniors that live in our community are able to walk uh, into our city hall. Uh, we're gonna make our buildings more accessible to seniors and more accessible to the public. Yes, 
And I think, Mr. Mayor, one of our uh, greatest accomplishments thus far, um, and there are many more to come, many more ahead, but has been opening up lines of communication, yes. not just um, you, you know, not just to the residents, which is very important, um, but starting with the soul of, of City Hall, the city of Calumet City, that we have opened up lines of communications amongst the departments. Um, I think when we first came on board here in Calumet City, it, it appeared that a lot of the departments were functioning within their own departments yes. and not um, not communicating or feeling that they were able to open the door or step through a door to communicate with other departments. Um, but really creating that environment of the departments acting as a whole yeah. um, and, and not having this divide within. Well, part of that starts with us praying in the morning, but it also starts with me having to open the door of policy with our department heads. And I ask residents all the time, how many of, of residents have been into City Hall and been into the mayor's office? And that's a key question because that means that we were not connecting to our residents. So this connection that we're doing to our residents starts with us first. So if we can't connect with each other, how do we expect the residents to connect with us and understand what we're communicating, understand what we're commun the vision that we want our residents to see and feel when they come Everybody can feel when someone's being phony. When you walk into a room and someone is, uh, is not being genuine, then you don't want to come back to that city hall. You don't want to come back to that department. You don't want to come back to that business. So our, my goal is to make sure that when everyone comes in uh, to our city hall, it's their city hall and they feel comfortable. And I think in order for communication to be effective, Mr. Mayor, um, there has to be transparency, yes. full transparency, um, in which case I know one of our, um, our biggest focuses uh, as of recent um, has been the forensic audit. Can we talk a little bit about the forensic audit? When I got elected, uh, one of the first things on May 1st when I got sworn into office, I looked residents and I and told them that we have to not only be transparent, but we have to start with doing a forensic audit. And that's department by department. Making sure that uh, the past administration was held accountable for the spending, making sure that the past administration uh, was held accountable for the budget that was presented to the resident, and making sure that we had a full account uh, of what happened uh, before I took office on May 1st. So we're still going through that forensic audit. Uh, we've taken some of the suggestions from the forensic audit uh, and changed some of the components. Uh, for example, in the purchasing department, we've instituted a purchasing uh, policy where we want to make sure that things are accountable. I review all of the purchasing orders, even if it's $8, to ensure that we are being accountable to the residents uh, and they know what we are spending on uh, at each council meeting. And I invite residents to watch our council meetings. Our city council meetings are the second and fourth Thursday of every month. So how many residents are watching our city council meetings? We have information, but we have to do a better job of communicating to our residents. And part of that is we've hired community service people to go out and walk uh, the community and talk to residents. So we're going to make sure that we start knocking on doors. And if you're not going to come to us, we're going to come to you. Uh, to make sure that we're telling you what we're doing in Calumet City and being transparent um, about everything that's going on and upcoming we're going to have the results of our forensic audit soon. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about why, um, you know, help the residents understand why we have placed a pause on our normal annual events yeah, the city typically holds? Well, well part, part of it is the, the governor just issue. issued a mask mandate and vaccination for all employees uh, teachers and employees in the public sector, uh, union members, some union members. So I'm vaccinated. I know you're vaccinated, uh, but Cayman City has a 40% vaccination rate. That means out of our 37,000 residents, only 15,000 are vaccinated. We're not only gonna improve those rates, but we're gonna make sure that people are, have the proper information about the vaccine. And I know some people are skeptical about getting the vaccination, but now that we're going through this second wave of the COVID virus, we want to make sure that our uh, employees and our public is protected when they come to City Hall. So that means we're not going to have the usual uh, Labor Day parade. We didn't have the 4th of July celebration uh, due to COVID. 
and we may not open City Hall until November or December because the COVID virus is still here. So residents need to take heed. Uh, we're going to have upcoming vaccination uh, programs and events. Um, you know, there have been some talks about naming it a shot and a taco, which we may do, which means that if you come and get a shot, we're going to have to shot. vaccination shots. So let me clear that up. It's not a shot. It's a vaccination shot uh, along with uh, some of our food vendors, taco truck, and uh, we may include McDonald's, um, Pete's and other places. Uh, we were talking with Sam's Club now to do the vaccinations there. But our goal is to make sure that our residents get vaccinated or get the proper information uh, and educate you on how the vaccination is going to save your life. Uh, and that's our goal. So we're not going to have our traditional um, Labor Day parade. I know residents look forward to that. But we're going to come back bigger and better next year uh, with the new city hall, uh, with the casino, uh, and with positive attitude to make sure that uh, residents are enjoying Cayman City. So no uh, community events. Uh, we're just going door to door, passing out information to residents and doing a vaccination because we can't open City Hall until we're sure that our employees and our, our residents are, are taking, taking care, care of first. Absolutely. And to the residents of Calumet City, know that we will um, keep you informed. Um, we are in the process of uh, creating a new city website. Um, but despite, we'll have all the information, all the most recent new current information available on city sites. You, of course, are welcome to contact us here at City Hall or any of the departments. Um, but, Mr. Mayor, I thank you for your time. Um, and I know the residents um, appreciate your time as well, your focus to, to move the, the city forward. Um, you know, residents of Calumet City, we are looking to engage you um, and also ask that you please continue to engage us on your behalf. Yeah, and that, I couldn't agree more because now this is your channel. We want to make sure that we provide you this forum so residents can send us complaints, send us comments, send us positive news. Uh, let us know about people in our community that we need to honor. We have a lot of exciting people. Uh, we have a lot of people with history of Cayuga City that tell us about that history so we can honor them. Tell us about their history so we can, we can go and, and work around issues that may come up in Cayman City. But let this channel be the venue for you uh, to not only listen about the ideas that we have coming from Cayman City, but use our website, use our city services, and come and be a part of your city government. Uh, that's what we want residents to do. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to the residents of uh, Calumet City, as well as the staff. Until next time. Thank you.